Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. We're going to focus on the anatomy of the trachea in this video. The trachea, which we like to call the windpipe, extends from our larynx. Remember here we have our larynx with this very characteristic thyroid cartilage. It extends from the inferior portion of the larynx all the way down to what we refer to as the um, um, bronchial tree, meaning at the point where it starts to split. You can see the bronchial tree help form the lungs here. Our trachea is characterized by a large amount of hyaline cartilage, and that hyaline cartilage is arranged in, arranged in these C-shaped structures. They look like they're full circles, but they're not, or full rings. They're actually C-shaped, as I'll show you in just a moment. The most inferior uh, piece of cartilage that is kind of the, the shape of a V and it's somewhat enlarged is very sensitive, very sens sensitive to all kinds of irritants and it helps us with coughing. Now if we take a look at the histology of the trachea you might recall that the trachea is the perfect example for the presence of pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue which we see quite nicely here. You see how it's also ciliated clearly on this slide um, and that's then followed by how about I label this as PCCE and that is then followed by uh, a thin layer right here of our lamina propria so together they form the mucosa and then in the submucosa we have connective tissue with uh, ceramucous glands we've mentioned those before we saw they were present in um, the pharynx as well. And then we have um, an outer layer of what we refer to uh, as the, uh, we refer to it as the adventitia, which is in this slide mostly this portion. So what we find in between our submucosa here and the adventitia is quite a bit of cartilage right here and that cartilage is surrounded by perichondrium which is dense regular to dense irregular connective tissue so right here we have our hyaline cartilage I hope you recognize that earlier I mentioned that the hyaline structures that make up the trachea are not rings but are C-shaped and you can see this very nicely here. This is a cross-section of both the trachea as well as the esophagus. So this right here is the esophagus. One thing I need for you to notice right away before we continue discussing the C-shaped hyaline structures, hyaline cartilage structures, is the fact that our trachea is always going to be a duct or a tube that must remain open. So we say that the trachea must remain patent. That's the terminology used. Our esophagus, along with all other hollow organs, they have no reason, maybe the blood vessels excluded there, they don't have any reason to be patent when there's nothing in them. And so you can see this very clearly here this esophagus does not have food in it, so there's no reason for it to be distended, and so therefore it remains collapsed. The, we talk about the trachea needing to be patent. It's one of the things you will definitely check um, on your patients in the event there seems to be seem to be breathing issues. So let's come back about to or come back to the C-shaped hyaline cartilage structures. So the <clears throat> excuse me. The cartilage stops on the posterior aspect of our trachea, and that's where we find an important muscle illustrated right here called the trachealis, which is a smooth muscle. It helps the trachea constrict or dilate depending on the body's needs and, and reflexes. And it also, the fact that there's no cartilage here and instead softer tissue allows the esophagus to distend when it does uh, pass food. We're now ready to discuss the bronchial tree in the next video.